All roads lead to Mandra for the next couple of weeks. Hello, my name is James Broadhurst. Joining me on the Wednesday preview is Hayden King. And Hayden, are you looking forward to this Mandra Cup series? Absolutely, James. We've got four cracking heats. Uh, looking forward to each and every one of them. They've all got moving parts that we're going to dissect. So hopefully we can find a couple of winners there. And yeah, that's going to be the highlight of my weekend, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Four heats, as you mentioned. This Friday night at Mandra, how about we get stuck straight into them there Hayden kicking off with this first heat down there and this one looks to be a pretty intriguing affair by uh, my estimation here Hayden box one we've got the short course champion Bones McCoy of course got an awesome record from the pole has never competed believe it or not over the 490 uh, Hayden before we get into the rest of the field your thoughts uh, on the uh, on this short course champ Bones McCoy here in this race well he's now the medium course <laughs> pretender Bones McCoy he's got eyes on the throne of the 490 mm. honestly no disrespect to Bones McCoy but I just can't see him getting the 490 meters I think it's just 100 meters or thereabouts too far for him but he was reasonably strong in that close photo here on Saturday at Cannington over the 380. We see Rippin Tomahawk back over the 490. We know he's very capable when he can put it all together. Webleck Ranger. Manassas, who was the shock winner last week. Stone Cold right. Augie, West on Radar. The dog he usurped there. Momentum comes up with box number seven. Has to be said... That was a deeply weird race. <laughs> it was a weird race. Let's have a look at it right now. Hayden and Momentum jumps to the front from box seven. Same draw as he has this week. And at this point, you just think it's all over. Well, guess what, <laughs> punters? It isn't. Momentum can't put them away. He drifts wide on the turn, which allows Mamasis wearing the yellow rug to push through the middle and steal the race. Look, take nothing away from Manassas in that. But uh, what did you make of the run of Momentum there? I'm not sure what to make of it. I think he showed he wasn't at his absolute best with his run prior to that, and that run certainly left some be, conjecture yeah, maybe that, yeah. in, the, in the air. So it could easily see him bounce back, but I could never be confident based on that previous run that we see him able to win the race. I think he's definitely one of the contenders, but when I do my form analysis, if a horse or a dog puts in a poor run at their latest start. Sometimes I'm forgiving based on their previous form, but if they've done it a couple of times in a row and I do have to take it into consideration, I just can't be confident with him. And then we've got Rostered off out in box number eight. He was pretty unlucky last week. He won't provide any kind of early hindrance to him because we know he's probably not the fastest dog and he isn't going to get in momentum's path I wouldn't expect but um, it'll be interesting how the race develops that's for sure yeah absolutely look maybe momentum been up for a long time maybe not quite uh, at 100 percent at the moment uh, and also that 490 factor just not the distance for that dog I think but definitely can't rule him out because he is such a, a quality greyhound Open open affair, Heat 1, uh, good luck finding the winner. We turn our attention to Heat 2 here, and we've got Vice Grip, once again, a big name here, jumping out of the red here. We thought maybe an unusual prep for this series here. Hayden got beaten over the 490 the previous week by Amplify, but last week stepped up to the 600 at Cannington and won very comfortably. Having a look at that run now, he bounced straight to the front from box six and established a really decent advantage in the early stages. And then at the finish, he's able to draw away even further from the rest of the field to win by four lengths in 34.51. Good hit out. Maybe unusual to go up to the 600 then back to the 490 but uh, winning form is good form what about some of the other dogs can we make a case for any of them here Hayden who told spiders won four, four of his past five what about Jimmy's decision can that dog feature here Ford Scout gets an inside draw is he a chance if he leads uh, has had a couple of wins that, and he's clocked in the 2750s uh, of late so there are a few challenges here but obviously Vice Grip does stand out as the dog to beat yeah, certainly. And that 600 metre run last start was excellent. I know it was basically game over once he led, but the strength he showed through the line was really impressive. I know he comes back to the 490 metres here, but that just shows how emphatic he's going to be at the end of the race. And he's no one trick. We know he can perform over this kind of trip anyway. He doesn't need to be extended over those further distances. 
I can't see a great deal of pressure to his outside early. Who told Spider did begin pretty well here at Cannington last start when he ran out a ready winner. Um, others in the race, Gangnam Minnelli, I think, is just that cog below what he was doing. He hasn't had much luck. There was not so much wrong with his uh, run last week, but he did run last, and he never looked threatening in that race. Capito was very good, winning two starts ago, and then last start was in that same race as Jimmy's decision, who was able to come home really strongly. We've seen that made a trademark of his. It's just a case of how far back he has to get and where he gets to from box number eight. He does need to get across in those early stages, so um, a lot will develop in those early stages and that'll determine the fate of many but vice grip certainly looks the testing material absolutely we turn our attention here to heat three and i guess the question for you hayden can archibald or firecloud lead this probably their only chance they've got if they do i'm i'm not convinced that they win even if they do lead either of those two dogs but certainly they can put themselves in a prominent position if they're able to do that we've got unsee this here last two starts have been over 600 has run first and second nothing wrong with that form i was speaking to trainer shane williams yesterday he's just hoping that this dog can step and he thinks that unsee this will do quite well and then we've got granite song here from the lemon probably racing in career best form at the moment has won four from his past five. First and only time he raced at Mandra, that was uh, three back, and he won in 27.37 over the 490, if you don't mind. That's a good performance to come into this series on. Might add, might add Augie, he's picked up a couple of wins over the 490 in the past two. We've got Falcon 9 here, breakthrough win at Cannington last week. Does go okay from wide draws sort of dog i can never seem to get on at the right time but uh, look a few chances here granite song the standout for me your thoughts on this field yeah on current form yes he does draw box number five though which never makes it easy he will be at a lemon be, he will have to be on the top of his game james but in assistance to that fact he's got fire cloud drawn to his inside who begins well right. should give him that cover early sleepy george isn't going to provide the greatest amount of resistance, I wouldn't think, immediately to his outside. And in spite of what Shane Williams says, hoping unsee this can step, I don't think it's the end of the world if he doesn't, because then he might get the back of Archibald in those early stages. And we've seen him over 600 recently pretty strong. So if he could get that cover on the back of Archibald and there was that bit of mixing out wide, then unsee this still comes into calculations. And Falcon 9, the Kennington hoodoo, is finally over. <laughs> right. It was over that race soon after the start as well. He went straight to the front, established a big margin, bolted in, and comes back to his beloved Mandra here. So it's hard to rule him out of the mix, but with clear running and a good jump, you'd have to say Granite Song on current form is certainly the one to beat. Oh, Star's favourite there for sure. All right, fourth and final heat here, Hayden. One dog absolutely stands out for me here in the pink amplifier. She's the dog for me here. Brilliant over this distance and she's so good early that I don't think that this outside draw is going to be a problem for her, especially with a couple of dogs on her inside that aren't known for uh, their early pace. Can you see anything that's going to upset the apple cart here? Not really. Amplified. When a dog that I really like has drawn box eight, it's one of my favourite things because they've got all that room to their outside and they can build momentum. I don't think it'll be an issue here. I think Amplified probably would have been winning from any box just because we know she's got that early speed, she can keep running, she's the Mandra co-track record holder, so she's going to be hard to beat regardless of what happens. And as we touched on last week, she's probably the top seed heading into the series. Right. Supercharge, Box 1 gives him a good chance to bounce back to what we know he is capable of. He just hasn't been hitting the jump, and that's ruled him out of calculations. If he does start to begin, then we can see him reel off some pretty good times. Others in the mix, West on Bray was good when second last time out. We get to see Mick flashback at the races, always very capable over the 490 metres. But You're a big fan of Mick Flash. What, what are you hoping for out of him in this one? Qualification, yeah. I think uh, it's the first stepping stone to making it into the Mandra Cup, and I think qualification is a win. He just needs the right run of things, the right box draw next week, and we could see him in the money, but it really does in truth look amplifies race to lose all right well those are the four heats of course the following friday night at mandra hayden the big final 
It's going to be huge. This one, absolutely huge, huge, huge. huge. Mm. Uh, we've got full house pretty much in the restaurant only a couple of tables left so get in super quick if you want to get yourself in the restaurant but there's going to be plenty happening on and off the track on that night so you can't get in the restaurant still turn up to the public side going to be a huge night and a fantastic race whichever of the dogs get through so that's all happening down at mandra over the this friday night and next friday night but this saturday night hayden we've got an 11 race card at cannington thought uh, race four was one that was worth having a look at. This is the 380 metre free to all. Got a full field of eight here. Some handy dogs going around in this one. Of course immediately drawing attention Fabriola Ali for trainer Joe Daly coming in off a hat trick of wins. Two of those have been over the 405. Last week came up to the city. One over 380 in a time of 2172. That is some good form. We've got the kennel mate, Pennywise, lurking out here in box six, Hayden. hi -ho, Georgie. Of course, Pennywise coming into this on the back of a win over the 380 last week as well after racing down at Mandra for a few months. Uh, has been pretty handy over the stretch, this dog, without winning too often. And then, of course, Global Trader, box four here. Got a great record over this trip Fabriola Ali deserves to be favourite here or not, Hayden? Yes, I think Fabriola Ali will attract the bulk of that market attention. I think probably starts just in the red and will be hard to beat, but I am glad you picked out this race because there are a few permutations to this contest. Blackpool Bolt does like to get down to the rail, so if Fabriola isn't bang on the money there at the start, then for, um, Blackpool Bolt could provide some resistance. Bill Minnelli's not going to be an early contender, but although up in class, we know he is reasonably strong at the end of 380. The one I like in the race is Global Trader. I think he could get the right run of things with those things considered to his inside of the start. Natural Ivy to his outside isn't a scintillating beginner certainly does its best work when drawn the inside as well. Pennywise is one of the two Joe Daly dogs you touched on, and I think it's a credit to Joe. These dogs have kept yeah. improving and getting through their grades, and now they're up into these free-for-all races, and then close contact souls glory out wide. But the one I am really interested in is Global Trader. I think he could get a good map, and if he's up outside the pace, based on that last run, I think he'll be very hard to beat because he actually got checked out of it on that first turn and he showed a lot of audacity and strength to keep coming at them late. All right, there you go. That's what we've got ahead of us on the weekend. We've also got racing at Cannington tonight. Hayden, you're going to be at track. You're going to be calling all the action, so looking forward to that. We've got uh, some best bets coming up from you and I, but before that, I want to send out a shout out to uh, Shane Williams, mentioned him before, to him and also Stephen Carley, owners of Iconic Indy. Got a story on that greyhound uh, coming up. Uh, look out for it on our social media over the next week or so. Iconic Indy, of course, going around at Cannington tonight in race 10. Not my best bet though. For my best bet, I'm heading towards race eight, number eight, Lupini Manelli. Just one of these dogs that's starting to, to build up these wins here for David Hobby in his return. He's got these young dogs coming through and starting to collect winners as you'd expect from him. Pretty nice maiden victory from Lupini Manelli last week. I wanna see what this dog can do from the other end of the boxes though. Uh, this week. I think she might get a nice run into it uh, with the dogs that she's got there on her inside. So race eight, number eight, Lupini Manelli. And I suspect, Hayden, you don't agree with my selection this week. We're locking horns. We are. We head are to head, head to head. Race eight, number three, Browse the One. I was really taken with this dog's last win here at Cannington. Bounced straight to the front. Looked pretty strong through the line. I was here calling that day and I was left impressed. Browse them one tonight. Just needs to get up on the pace. I think if he can lead Lupini Manelli, that'll make him pretty hard to toss. And if he is able to do that, it'll be a very upbeat race call in the eighth <laughs> event of the program. Right. With Hayden uh, trumping over me tonight. Well, we'll see race eight. One to look out for, for sure. Hey, look, that's all we've got for you this week, Hayden, on the preview. Thank you once again for joining. I think you're flying solo again next week on this one absolutely absolutely yep. okay yep. i'll be tuning in though uh, watching with interest what you've got to say hey thanks for joining us if you can't make it to the track we hopefully will see you next week on the preview